Today we are talking about being connected. And when the, when the world becomes connected through the Internet of Things, we let software look at our cities, we let software look at our workplaces and into our living rooms. This software, these algorithms, they look at data and they help us make better decisions about how to work more efficiently or how to stay healthy. Or they can even make decisions for us or about us. Imagine, in a couple of years, everybody in your neighborhood drives an electric car. And one morning, everybody gets ready for their commute. Um, and they go to their car, and you and all your neighbors find their car charged just a fraction of what you need to make it to work. What happened? Well, if everybody wants to charge their car overnight, um, the power grid can't handle that. A charging a car costs as much energy as five households. But the Internet of Things can solve this. We just have to create a system that lets some people charge first and others people later. Now there's a problem. Who do we charge first? Who do we give priority and who has to wait their turn? Well, our system has to make a couple of decisions. Um, I think we can all agree that a doctor needs a charged car so he can respond to emergencies, right? So with a little bit of data about your profession, um, we can make sure the doctor can make it to the next heart attack. I also think we want to make sure we all make it to work tomorrow. So if we have a little bit of data from your Google Maps or your TomTom, Tom, we can make sure you can make that commute. You see, with a little bit more data, you get a better solution. And life's not only about work, right? We also want to make sure you can make it on the next weekend trip or to that dentist appointment. So if you give us some access to your calendar, we can have a little bit of data and make sure you can make it to that brunch on Sunday morning. With a little bit more data, we get you a better solution. And um, um, today is your lucky day. Because our algorithm, our algorithm looked at your purchase history of hemorrhoid cream and found out that you're running low. So we charged your car a little bit extra so you can make that detour to that pharmacy downtown. Well, suddenly you see that the better solution is not okay anymore. This solution not only relies on sensitive data, it's also a black box that looks at data and gets to decide who has mobility and who doesn't. And one day, you'll find your car in the morning, not charged at all, and you'll have no idea why that happened. Was it because you switched jobs or you got plenty of hemorrhoid cream? You don't know. This is not some thought experiment. This is an actual problem we're working on with leading organizations in the, um, in the energy sector. Um, now, don't get me wrong. The Internet of Things, or IoT for short, is a great tool. It's a great tool to make our lives more comfortable, to make our work efficient. I also think the next speaker is going to give some really good examples. Uh, but when it's a tool, is it a tool like a hammer? A tool everyone can handle. If you miss the nail, it's just you that's hurt. Therefore, it's a tool that everybody can go into a shop and buy. You see, the thing with the Internet of Things is that this hammer can then turn into something bigger, like a steamroller, a tool that is essential for infrastructure, but it can have drastic consequences when used in the wrong way. So that's why only qualified professionals can use it. You may wonder in your, when you're developing an IoT solution, even though when you start with the best intentions, it can develop into a steamroller. So how do you know when a hammer is turning into a steamroller? In other words, when am I developing something useful for people 
and why, when do I develop a solution that's based on unfair data practices? This dilemma is central to our work at our design studio, The Incredible Machine. But it wasn't always like this. When we started our studio in 2012, we worked with dozens of clients to uh, transform their business through the IoT. Uh, and sometimes we worked at projects where collecting personal data was more important than creating value for people. We have worked on these projects that are black boxes that make decisions based on data about users, about um, citizens, about employees. And every time that would happen, we wondered, how did this happen? Like, when we started this project, we were excited about the possibilities. And when we look at the final design, we conjured up a steamroller. Um, we couldn't continue to help companies create products and services that deemed uh, data more important than human values. So we were part of a problem, but how could we be part of a solution? Should we just dismiss the Internet of Things? Just heavily restrict what products can do, what they can monitor, what they can communicate? but potentially miss out on many great opportunities to make lives better or even save lives? Or should we embrace technological progress, let it take its course, let it, maybe it takes, um, it, 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 it takes a sacrifice of some of our values along the way. But I guess the recent uh, influence of propaganda on social media in the recent US elections have shown us we cannot afford not to stay critical about technology. I think we have to look for a solution somewhere else. Oh. And I think it's a cultural problem. The problem is not about the products, the data, the technology. The problem lies with the values that we embed in the products that we as designers, as engineers, as managers create. So we have to look at culture, because if we want to build an Internet of Things we can trust, we have to come together and decide what's important, what is not, what is right, what is wrong. We have to look at ethics. We weren't the only one with this realization. In 2015, we gathered with a group of designers and researchers that shared our concerns. This group uh, said it was time for action. Well, actually, it was time for words. The IoT Design Manifesto. Ten principles for design in the connected world. It lists principles like we are deliberate about what data we collect, about only using that specific data that's used to make the product work. We make the parties associated with an IoT product explicit. It's about 100% transparency about who has access to your data and what they can do with it. And it's not only about transparency. The principle, we empower users to be masters of their own domain, dictates that users have the final control about what's theirs. We launched the IoT Design Manifesto at a conference uh, ThinksCon in 2015. In a matter of weeks, hundreds of professionals signed the document, from thought leaders in Silicon Valley to professors from world-class universities, from designers in China and in India to innovation managers in the tech industry. It even became the basis of courses about IoT at schools and universities. And the IoT Design Manifesto became a tool itself. When you are developing an IoT solution, you can look at it and say, am I still making it a hammer or are we creating a steamroller? Holding up that document in Berlin in 2015 changed my career. Projects changed. Suddenly, conversations with clients 
um, developed. I couldn't, uh, um, some clients we couldn't align with anymore and we passed on their projects. And other clients came to us to look to how to develop a fair IoT solution. And that leads me back to a conversation I had earlier this year. A research institute and an energy company asked us, look, the future of electric vehicles is smart charging, charging based on data. But when we develop this smart charging, we might create a black box that gets to decide who gets to drive their car and who doesn't. It took a while for us to understand their question. It was not, they weren't asking for a fair algorithm. They were asking us to help them change the culture in which smart charging was being developed, was being imagined. So we collaborated on an example of the first smart charging station that was not a black box, that was transparent. This smart charging station would show exactly what data it would use to make a planning, exactly what decisions it would make and allow a user to scrutinize the algorithm. And if they wouldn't consider it fair, they would have leverage over the energy company. It is just an example, but it helps us, ch it help us change the conversation between smart cities and energy companies. Over the years, when working in this field of IoT, I had this realization. Data may be worth a lot of money. Data has no values. Values are a human thing. And when we apply technology, when we design products and services, we embed our values in the design of these products. So if we want an IoT we can trust, we have to talk about ethics. Did the IoT manifesto cause positive change? I don't know. I might need a little bit more data to tell for sure. Thank you.